FBI agent who said that at the time, October 2020, the FBI had no evidence that the laptop story was a hack and leak operation. No evidence. So they had done exactly what Mr. Hamilton described in his uh, well-written uh, written, uh, brief. I now recognize the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Studio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, just oh, to- One second, Mr. Studio, if you would. I understand you have a hard stop, Mr. Hamilton. We wanted you to be able to stay for, you know, any Democrat want to ask you a question. If you got to run, I we do. understand. If time's now, Mr. Studio. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you're take, so you're taking off, Mr. Hamilton's taking off? All right, so Mr. Costello, I'll just start at um, page six of your um, written testimony. Um, I know the chairman got into what Mr. Cohen said about, um, I swear to God, Bob, I don't have anything on Donald Trump. And then after that, so I'm at the end of page six of your written testimony, and I just wanna walk through this. Through further cross-examination, Cohen told me that he knew there was money missing from the Trump inauguration fund, but that Donald Trump had nothing to do with it. Is that correct? Where are you referencing on page I'm six? I'm in your written testimony right. on page six at the bottom. Okay. And, and you're referring to what again? I'll just read it. There, through further cross-examination, Cohen told me that he knew there was money missing from the Trump inauguration. Yes. I see where you are now, thank okay. you. Okay, and then on the next page, um, end of that first paragraph, Cohen decided that while he didn't believe the allegation of the Stormy Daniels story, um, that he thought the story would be embarrassing for Trump and especially for Melania, so he decided he would take care of it himself. Absolutely, and that is contrary to what this guy testified to in court in New York yesterday. Well, and what's not being talked about is your next paragraph, like the reason and his motivation for that. So if you could just kind of walk through that for the committee. Yeah, I, obviously, uh, when we started to talk about the NDAs, and this is the very first meeting at the Regency Hotel, when, by the way, Rudy Giuliani was not involved in representing Donald Trump at that time. Cohn testified that it was a conspiracy between Giuliani and Costello as of this date. Totally false. In any event, he also said that he didn't discuss the Stormy Daniels matter with us, and he certainly did. I specifically asked him because he kept on going back saying, I can't believe they're trying to put me in jail for these NDAs. So I said, Michael, tell me about the NDA. Tell me about Stormy Daniels. What did you do? He said, I got a call from from a lawyer representing Stormy Daniels who represented that she was going to testify that Donald Trump had sex with Stormy Daniels. Michael Cohn said, I didn't believe the allegation, but I knew that such an allegation would be terribly embarrassing. He said, it would be embarrassing. He focused on Melania Trump. He said, I didn't want to embarrass Melania Trump. He said, that's why I decided to take care of this on my own. Right. I went back to that several times. You did this on your own? On my own. Did Donald Trump have anything to do with it? No. Did you get the money from Donald Trump? No. From any of his organizations? No. From anybody connected to Donald Trump? No. Where did you get the money? I took out a HELOC loan against my property. I said, why would you do that? He said, I didn't want anybody to know where I got this money. I didn't want Melania to know. I didn't want my own wife to know because she's in charge, he said, of the Cohn family finances. He said, if she saw money coming out of my account, she'd ask me 100 questions and I didn't want to answer any of them. It was clear after talking to him for several days after that, whenever we talked on the phone or in my office, that he kept on bringing up the subject that he felt he was betrayed by not being brought down to Washington, D.C. This guy thought, he said to me, that he should have been Attorney General of the United States, or at least the Chief Assistant to the President. Ludicrous, but that's what he thought. And he was very angry about that. He wanted to do something to put himself back into the inner circle of Donald Trump. That's why he took care of this on his own. There had to be a motivation. Michael Cohn is always working for things that benefit himself. And that's what he was doing here. That's completely different to what he said that he told the grand jury, that's completely different to what he's testifying to in New York. Nobody has heard this side of the equation. Right, when, which is, I think, is important that you're talking about that today 
and I'm now on page eight, but just to keep, we're going to keep going from where you were in your, in your written testimony. The point is, when Michael Cohen was presented with the opportunity to implicate Donald Trump in exchange for eliminating his own enormous legal problems, he repeatedly said he had nothing truthful on Donald Trump. Yeah, why is that important? It's important because this guy literally was suicidal at the moment. He's saying, guys, I need you to tell me what my escape route is. How do I get out of this oncoming legal deluge that I see coming my way? And so I said, look, it's simple. If you look at what happened here, the U.S. attorney went to great lengths to get a search warrant for your law office. They had to go to Maine Justice. They think you have something. Remember, he's telling us, I didn't do anything illegal. Counts one through seven that he pled guilty to had nothing to do with Donald Trump. He said, I didn't do anything illegal. And I've been cooperating with the special counsel. I've been cooperating with Congress. Didn't tell us that he lied to Congress. I said, Michael, isn't it easier if you have something truthful, and I kept on repeating that, it's got to be truthful. Don't make something up. If you have something truthful on Donald Trump, isn't it easier for you to cooperate against Donald Trump than it is to kill yourself? The answer is obvious. So when they claim that I was trying to shut up Michael Cohen, it's exactly the opposite. I was on that first day telling him, here's your escape route if you have truthful information, but he didn't. And at this time, you were his attorney, which is why he made all these admissions. Yeah, I mean, he makes these claims that uh, we were never his attorney. We, he, I, you, I can show you emails and text messages and phone calls where he kept on saying, Bob, you guys are on the team, but I don't want to announce it now. I, he had McDermott, Will, and Emery going through documents here in Washington, D.C. He said, I don't want to announce it now. We didn't give him a retainer agreement the first time we met him at the Regency Hotel. We gave him a retainer agreement when he came to our offices, he came to our offices, uh, that he kept on saying, well, I can't deal with this now. The guy slow played us, there's no question about it. And I told the partner in charge of this, he's slow playing us, get rid of this guy. He's never gonna come up with the money, he's a bad penny, he's just gonna keep on coming back. So it wasn't my call because it was his client, not my client. So that's why Michael kept on calling me and I was giving him the advice that I should have given him all along, truthful advice. Nobody was pressuring him. I was giving him the straight facts as I knew them. My time's expired. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman